you've been no help again. I uh, sure you are. You're supervisor, right? 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. 8.30 in the morning. It's a beautiful morning, but I've been underneath the coach, been crawling around. Uh, not crawling around. I've been under there working on... Uh, I'm finally going to get around to fixing the uh, exhaust manifold or the exhaust uh, donut gaskets on the coachman i don't know what it is about these uh chevrolet engines not the not the bad chevrolets but but the tioga that had the ford the big block ford ford 60 never had an issue but then i had the bounder it had the the big block 454 uh cubic inch chevrolet engine it went through a few sets of donut gaskets and the uh the coachman it's done well i put the new exhaust manifolds on it and new donut gaskets go along with it and they last a little while and it's burnt them out too so now we're putting another set in uh i don't know maybe it's me maybe it was poor installation right or maybe just chevrolet likes to gobble them up i don't know here's the exhaust pipe that comes down from the uh exhaust manifold the thing is and it's cut into some sections here because the thing is when i put the new exhaust manifolds on the coachman okay it came with some you know weird 80s technology they had a better idea for emissions and all that stuff they put some weird stainless steel exhaust manifolds on it that are no longer available when i was looking for them i searched online i looked at um all the auto parts stores uh advanced auto parts AutoZone, napa o'reilly's you know everybody says those are no longer available so what do you do so you find the next best thing I, so i went to online to rock auto and uh, they were available, but they weren't the stainless steel ones. They were the cast iron ones, which was fine with me. I'd happily go back to the good old cast iron technology, right? Um, same, you know, basically the same thing. They fit a 454, a big block Chevy, but they're like, um, they're more like Corvette style exhaust manifolds. So a little bit of a uh, adaptation had to, had to happen. The geometry was a little bit different on the, it was correct where it bolted to the engine, but where it came down, it was uh, it was a little bit shorter. So I had to do a little. Since I didn't have a uh, a pipe stretcher, <laughs> okay, and nobody I, nobody seemed to have one to rent, what I had to do was cut cut the pipe and put a section in. Well, it didn't need extended that much. Keep in mind this pipe overlays it slides over, so you know it's in about that far on this end, that far on that end. It had to be really extended by about two inches. To make that long because the other exhaust the new exhaust stop the new style exhaust manifold was a you know a couple inches shorter than the old stainless steel one so um put a little sleeve in there a couple of clamps and then the same thing uh because it was shorter that way it also made it need to be a little bit longer this way so same thing i and i just took the clamps off and took this off for now uh and this needed extended by only about an inch or so just just to make everything right so I have this kind of cobbled together. Um, it's a good fit. It works good, but I had to double check. I wanted to be certain of the uh, diameter of the uh, donut gasket or what's left of it. So, you know, it just seems to burn them out, chew them up. And there's uh, marks on here that it was, cor you know, correctly spaced. It wasn't in there kicked or anything, but I installed it. There's kind of a crush line that runs right down the center of it. So that all looked good. Um, oh, the thing is, now if I go to and look on the auto parts store, any of them, for a donut gasket for the coachman, it finds the original style, which was this part was a little bit different where it adapted to the exhaust manifold. It had a flange, a steel flange on it. Well, the Corvette style or not, they're it's tapered on both ends so it's tapered here and then where it comes down it's tapered so it needs kind of a double taper okay to, to, to match this one and to match the other one so now i have to try to find donut gaskets for like a, an old corvette like a late 60s early 70s corvette well <laughs> so and that's all fine and everything they they're out there they're available but you know i just wanted to, i just went and took this off so i could get it out here and uh get a uh, accurate diameter i couldn't remember if it was two and a quarter inch inside diameter or two and a half inch and it appears it is uh sometimes these get a little bit egg shaped so it won't be part i just need a ballpark idea and i'm glad i did check it i was thinking it was two and a half and they're really only about two and a quarter uh, so that's good uh 
that'll be easy to find. So I need to get those ordered. Uh, obviously this is not, or actually I need to go back and double check on a couple websites and see if the two and a quarter inch is available. I don't think it's going to go back together today. Uh, i got a couple things I want to do and uh, as long as I get them rounded up and maybe go, maybe I'll go pick them up later, but we'll get this job out of the way uh, soon enough. But this has kind of been a, just one of them jobs where you got to climb under the vehicle and be messing around with old rusty, dirty stuff and, you know, spraying it down and uh the wd-40 worked good keep in mind i replaced that i did that work this last year so nothing was too rusty uh, it's too difficult to come apart so fortunately um what else we got going on bella what do you got your turn you want a little segment here huh we put the trail cam out in the backyard last night i'm going to check it later and see if we captured any uh wildlife activity like uh deer or rabbits. You want to go see if there's any rabbits out there? Eh? <laughs> so, uh, what else we got going on uh, with the coachman? Oh, yeah, the other big job, uh, which is a bigger job, actually, is I need to go over all the brakes on the coachman. Uh, at least the front ones I were new when I bought it. They'd just been put on. But I want to check the brake pads and because that's the big wear item. Uh, if they're getting thin, they're starting to get in the you know a bit worn uh you know 50 or more i'll just go and put new pads on it it's just cheaper to put new pads on it than it is to wear them all the way down and ruin the rotors so we have a look at that but i definitely want to look at the the back brakes uh something i noticed and i kind of suspected and knew was going on what i noticed was and i can see it over there now there's uh the bottom of that tire over there is uh, got a little wet spot so and i know from checking the brake fluid uh periodically up in the master cylinder up front the one reservoir was uh, was losing fluid. Uh, one time I checked it, it was just kind of eh, a little bit low, so I topped it off. And then I checked it again here not too long ago, and it was low again. And so that one reservoir is losing fluid. So I think the wheel cylinder, um, the Coachman has rear drum brakes, so it would have a wheel cylinder, not a not a brake caliper. Uh, so it has brake shoes, not pads, and a wheel cylinder up in there. So I'm pretty sure it's leaking uh and i just i just need to get the pull back all apart anyway and uh you know if it needs new brake shoes put new brake shoes on it along with the wheel cylinder i'll probably put new uh axle seals in it while it's apart uh because it has the, yeah those are the ones that's all gonna come come apart uh so anyway that's gonna be probably the big job of the year was uh, doing the rear brakes on this so eh, you know it's not too terrible ter terribly bad it's just one of the things you got to get a lot of tools out and jacks out and jack this heavy thing up and block it and well this one this side would be easy enough to do right here where it sits i can support it back underneath the axle or back behind the wheel under the axle take these boards out pop the wheel off i could work on this right here pretty easily but the other side's another story it <laughs> the opposite is true all right it this side would kind of be it'd be hard to to work on because it already kind of sits down in the divot it, it's kind of down it's kind of down, going downhill here and um it's just so the, the rv is much lower to the ground what i'll just probably do is what i'm what i'm ready to tackle this job is you know put it pull it out in the driveway where i got more room to work and uh, jack up, get both sides jacked up and uh that's the way to do it but uh we'll be getting to this job uh sometime soon uh, if I don't do this and the exhaust, I mean, it, it just won't be fit to travel in. You know, I can't be doing, having them questionable brakes at all. They need to be 100%. And I can't go around with terrible exhaust leaks. So we need to get all that stuff knocked out. I guess another job, um, it's an op, it's optional. It's not a critical job that needs done like this. This is critical. This needs done. Optional job I've been wanting to get to. Maybe this will be filler work. I want to upgrade the power in the van. I wanted to put another solar panel up here and I do need to do some measuring. Uh, I'm sure it'll fit. Oh no, maybe it won't fit. Oh, <laughs> I better measure. Hmm. I planned on, I have these, part, this part of the old ladder rack still exists. I was gonna plan on, you know, I have four panels up there going from side to side. So there's four 100 watt panels up here. We got 400 watts of solar on the van. 
Uh, boy, a little bit dirty up here. Uh, and I thought I was gonna turn the other, instead of them going this way, long ways this way, I was gonna turn this one long ways and put it this way. The, the wires are on the one end where it would easily connect into those. But I don't think we quite have the space this way. I might have to actually jump back uh, behind the uh, roof fan and put it you know, back this way. Huh. Yeah, so I gotta do some measuring. That panel's, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, it's right inside the garage. Uh, hopefully the wires will still be long enough. I think the leads on that panel are actually a little bit longer than on these panels. They're not exact matching panels, but they're all, they're all 100 watt uh, panels. So I think they're all compatible. But I think the leads on the one in there are a little bit longer than on these energy panels. So it might still reach. Uh, otherwise I'll have to buy some, uh, you know, like little extensions. Uh, we can make it work as long as it'll physically fit up here. But I'll probably have to buy some more iron and add onto my rack here to mount it. So we're just kind of tinkering around this morning, I guess. Well, not tinkering, you know, we're getting started. Got to get the ball rolling. But uh, there's that panel right there. Um, yeah, I need to get that measured up. Make sure that's going to fit. Like I said, I think the uh, leads on it. I think the ones on an energy panel are only 18 or 24 inches. I swear these ones here are probably 36. So it very well might reach over. Again, I need to do some measuring. And uh, if I need to buy a couple pieces of steel, uh, not angle wire, I think I just need some flats, maybe inch and a quarter wide flats to go up to either end of that rack I have up there. Probably utilize these holes in here. You know, drill a hole in the steel and bolt it you know, to each side. Those, those will extend out on each end out to the existing rack. Plug it in and should be good to go. So I'm going to have some other upgrades going on here too. <laughs> We're, uh, we'll get to this stuff. You know, uh, these are some products that the uh, company sent me. It's been a long time since I did any review videos. You know, it's got to be, the timing's got to be right. It's got to be a good fit. Um, but those are two things I got for the van. I was offered to, to review them. Like I said, we haven't done a review video in probably or well over a year. So uh, these are actually very useful uh, products. It's a good match. I could absolutely use those in a van. They're very useful. So we'll get to be getting to those pretty soon. I think I'm going to clean this up for now. It's going to be getting hot soon. It's early, but it's supposed to be a hot day. Get into the 90s a good bit. Uh, so I'm going to get out here and get the ball rolling so I can at least get parts in. Uh, but I'm probably going to go hide in the air conditioner for a while this afternoon. <laughs> what do you think, Bella? Huh? We'll probably do that. Well, that's outside. Come on. This way. Come on. All right. Maybe we'll go check the trail cam out. Uh, actually, it's still early. There was deer. Should be quiet. Just a little bit ago, there was a couple of deer down in that corner of the yard. And they, they make their way around. And I have the trail cam set up just down there. Uh, I wonder if it got any activity last night. I might let it out there for a while. And uh, Once the, the uh, morning passes, you know, once it starts getting hot, I think, you know, they can lay down in the shade or find a cool valley or creek or something to stay cool. But uh, they might, they still might catch a few things this morning yet. Oh, I will let it slip on what one of those uh, is in one of those boxes. It says, it's a cell phone booster, a cell signal booster. And the reason I got that is because when we go camping, our two favorite spots, it turns out, you know what? When we go up to that Crooked Creek campground or way up to the north, up to the family farms. Bell, come on, get down this way. What are you doing? Uh, you know, just get a really poor signal. I mean, it works, but it's... It works most of the time. Sometimes it just phases out for a couple hours and like there's no internet and then it comes back. So it's in and out. So there's a cell phone, uh, a cell signal booster that probably get a mount uh, on the van uh, in such a way that when I go traveling in the winter time, I can easily just switch it over to the, uh, to the coachman. Uh, but yeah, that would be extremely useful. It, it just sucks when we go up there for a, a you know, stretch of days or a week and it's just, you know, I'm very unreliable cell service and, you know, no internet. And so, <laughs> so that is going to, that's, that's going to work out 
very good very practical item uh do we have anything else right now hmm you just follow me around everywhere don't you hmm uh, and the other thing too is uh, I got to do an oil change on the coachman. Again, that's just a quick and easy, uh, quick and easy thing. I've been putting that off, but uh, it's not like we're racking up the miles in a coachman. It just sit, pretty much sits here all summer. It's only run it out to Crooked Creek, you know, 15 miles away, well, I don't know, two or three times now this summer. So, but yeah, I need to get I need to get that done. What else are we doing today? So I guess I'm gonna actually gonna grab them tools up. I need to drop the other side of that exhaust down. And uh, at least it's all part. And then when my parts get here, I just pop it all back together and that can be done. Yeah, there's plenty of room. I can crawl under there and do that. Uh, it's just the thing is when the, when the coachman's parked over here, it's so much easier to work over on this side, on the passenger side of the vehicle. is Because um, it's, it's a little tough climb getting in that side to work on this on that other exhaust. But uh, there's actually enough room I can scoot in the whole way over there from from this side. I just need to get a piece of cardboard or something and put down here. Something I'll lay on. Huh. Uh, I guess one of them jobs just <laughs> I've put off. I'm not so enthusiastic about working on stuff. Uh, like I said in the last video, last couple of videos. But, um, it's not bad work. Half the trouble is uh, just uh, getting the tools out and getting started. Once you get started, it's... Uh, yeah, it rolls along okay, I guess. I'm not looking forward to doing, taking them, them back wheels and brakes off part. <laughs> I will confess to that. You know what? I think we're just going to go ahead down and check that uh, trail cam. Because it, uh, it is warming up. I think any wildlife traffic, uh, it's probably done for the day pretty much. We probably won't see any more till till it gets evening again. Bella Bella, come on. Come on, girl. Bad deers. Bad rabbits. Where? Huh? Yeah, we just put it down here. And hopefully, so what I'll do is I'll take the uh, camera up. I'll review the SD card. And if we've captured anything, we'll uh, put, it, uh, put it in the video next. Hopefully, we got something. That would be very strange if we didn't. I just got this drill cam. Maybe I don't have the settings right. <laughs> uh you know what i caught a coyote uh and some deer and stuff last uh last year uh that troll cam that troll cam died uh but i set her way over in that part of the yard and you know we don't have coyotes like there is in the southwest uh but they are around i did catch one down uh down there so maybe who knows it'd be nice if we caught a caught a deer or something huh so if not, well, as long as it's working, if nothing else, I probably should have caught Bella over there, right? <laughs> uh, we'll see. I'm going to grab this up, and uh, I'm going to review the card, and we'll see what we got. Yeah, a couple times a day. I mean, every morning, every evening. This is her little running path. The rabbits always come out. Uh, they're in this high stuff. And uh, who knows? Maybe a rabbit even triggered uh, this, uh, would trigger this. But um, they always come out here and hang out like in this part of the yard. And then they have quick cover. If they need to, they can just hurry up and run into the high weeds. And then and they're delicate. We'll find them. But she sees them out here. And uh, see where the coachman's that way up there. She comes running down through here. And then uh, they dart off into the high stuff. And yeah, she gives up. But uh, she, she enjoys the chase. Come on. Ready? Go, 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 go. Huh. Well, that was a total waste of time. I had there was an image of the palm palm of my hand on it, and that, and that was it. So I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> well, I'll experiment again with it. I'll set on. I don't know. I'll go through the settings. I know I turned the thing on. I don't know. I'll get it figured out, and we'll try again someday. Okay. So maybe that's all we got today. Just a short good morning video. What are you doing with your morning? What's everybody out there doing with your morning? Hmm? Anything productive? Get to it. Go on. It's early. Rise and be shiny. <laughs> All right. I'm going to think I'm going to mess with that other side and, uh, for a little bit and uh, put some tools away. Like I said, I can, it's early, but I can tell it's going to be a hot day. It'll, that'll come on pretty quickly. All right. Yeah, just a quick good morning video. Hope you all have a good day. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.